Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here. I've got a very special treat for you today. I'm going to give you one of the lessons from my Photography on the Brain course for free. Photography on the Brain is my exclusive video course that's designed to challenge you to think about creativity and photography in a whole new way and inspire you to try using some new approaches to your own image making. The full course is 30 lessons, over 5 hours of content, and it's a similar format to what you see here on the YouTube channel. But where most of these lessons are tips-based here, with Photography on the Brain we dive deeper and explore photography and creativity on a much more cerebral level. And in the process, I help you expand on your own personal and creative approach to photography so that you can become the most confident, creative, authentic artist with the camera that you can be. You can find a link to the course in the description below, and you can take advantage of a very special offer I've got for you guys for supporting me on the YouTube channel here. You can get the entire 30 lesson bundle for 50% off for a limited time. So enjoy this lesson and happy shooting. Hello and welcome to Photography on the Brain Lesson 14. The idea for today's course came to me when I was looking through the Flickr group for our course this morning and I was uh, critiquing some photos by Darren Wills and there was a, a compositional theme that kind of resonated with me. It was something that I've written about before. Uh, I, it's a, a topic that I've been hoping to, to include in a future course but I figured this would be a great time to get that out there and that's the idea of using unity and variety in your photographs and the different ways that you can do that. In fact, I like to think of these two concepts as compositional twins because they can work together but they can also create a sense of contrast within the image. On a fundamental level, most successful photographs work because they strike a balance between presenting enough variety in the frame between subjects and also tying everything together with one unifying theme. If you don't have a single unifying theme of some sort in your image, you run the risk of creating a haphazard composition that doesn't really go anywhere. It's sort of like a whole bunch of people in the room talking at the same time. A lot of stuff's being said, but no one can really understand or pick any one thing out, and it's not, certainly not a cohesive message of any sort. And this is especially true when you're trying to include more than one piece of subject in the frame. Now, some successful photographs get by on one very dynamic, bold, single subject. But most of the time we're including different elements that play off of each other inside the photo. Maybe two or three compelling subjects that relate with each other in somehow or contrast with each other. So using this kind of technique allows you to create that sense of balance. It helps you tie everything together with one single unifying message or concept for the photograph. As I just mentioned, some photographs can get by with one prominent piece of subject matter. But if you have more than one piece of subject in the frame, you're going to need something to tie all those elements together. And in fact, the more things you have in your composition, the more things in the frame, the stronger the need for this kind of a technique. Now, there are two techniques that I like to use to create this kind of unifying message. And as I said, these two techniques often work together and go hand in hand. And in most cases, you'll want to include some aspects of both of these techniques. You'll want to compose so that you create a certain sense of continuation on, and create a natural journey for them as they work their way through the frame. You don't want to make it too obvious, but it needs to be strong enough that it does pull them around from each element in the way that you intend. The first technique is unity. To use this term again, unity often implies a natural sense of continuation. Now there's a fine line here, as with most photographic techniques. Again, a photo without any sense of unity is like a group of people talking all at once. There's a lot of noise, but there's no message. At the same time, too much unity and your photo becomes a little too obvious and a little too monotonous, and that's not what you want either. The second technique is variety, and this represents a diversity of subjects that all fall within the same class or family or style. Now, the easy way to say it is same but different. You know, you could have a similar theme, but different sizes, different shapes, different uh, colors, it's essentially repetition and similarity without the monotony. Including more variety in your image can often make it more interesting. But again, that's where you need to think back to the concept of unity. Because too much variety without that sense of unity means that your photo won't carry the intended message. Usually, using more variety in your photo makes for a more interesting composition. But use too much variety without that sense of unity 
and then you run the risk of, of again, making a haphazard photo where nothing holds together, nothing ties together within the frame. So to put this another way, variety is what makes the unity more interesting, and the unity is what ties the variety together. So let's explore some of the ways that you can use these two techniques in your photography. The easiest way of creating a sense of unity is through repetition. Repetition of colors, shapes, patterns, textures. In fact, this is what sparked the whole idea for this lesson. When I was looking at Darren's photos this morning in our Flickr group, uh, he had a couple of photos that did a really nice job of illustrating repetition, and one of them was much more unity-based, and one of them was much more variety-based. One of the ways that you can diversify the sense of repetition and make it more interesting is to use a static versus a dynamic sense of repetition. Where a static being things that are always very similar throughout the frame, uh, dynamic repetition has that similarity but with a little more variation. Again, variety. An easy way to think about this is to imagine a checkerboard where you have 64 squares that perfectly alternate in size and placement and color between white and black on the board. This would be a perfect example of static repetition but if you changed up some of the squares to make them bigger and farther apart, or alternated colors differently, that would be a more dynamic repetition. Another way to add variety to repetition is to use an element of contrast. And the concept of contrast is pretty wide open. In photography, you could have subject matter that's, that varies in the size. You could have big, small, close and far, rough and smooth, light and dark. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use contrast to create this variation within your repetition. Another way to create this sense of variety through repetition is to emphasize certain subjects over others. Now, usually you'll want some kind of an entry way into your image, an easy way for the viewer to get right in. That's the main subject, and that's usually the most emphasized piece of subject material within the frame. You might also have some secondary elements that help flesh out the story and add more flavor, and the fact that they're less emphasized gives you that sense of variety but since they all relate or contrast to the main subject in some way, that creates that sense of unity. And you need this kind of emphasis in your frame. If you don't emphasize something in your frame, then your viewer won't have anything to lock onto. And if you don't have the variety of other elements in your frame, then they have nowhere to go. So your focal point device draws them in and suggests the story, while these secondary points help flesh out the story and add the sense of variety to the unity. Another technique is to use the concept of scale and proportion. In one of our previous lessons, I talked about using visual anchors, which help keep us visually calibrated, especially when we're juxtaposing uh, concepts of extraordinary and ordinary within our frame. Using a sense of scale and proportion in your photos can encourage your viewers and invite them to look at the world in a new way you might be showing them something that they're not used to seeing. And of course, using a visual anchor helps keep them grounded, uh, especially if it's something that's utterly foreign to them that they haven't experienced before with their eyes. And it can also help establish the relationship between the two things that you're showing and contrasting in the image. And another way to think about these concepts of unity and variety is to think of them and break them down into the ideas of themes and opposites. The themes are your unity and the opposites are your variety. And again, with any of these techniques, your goal is to create a sense of contrast and continuity within the frame. A contrast and continuity that work together. And once again, the contrast is what creates the, the added interest and the flavor of your story, while the continuity is what ties it all together with that one unifying theme. So I hope this all makes sense for you. And I'm sure that you already use these concepts in your photography. As I said, uh, Darren's use of repetition and variety in the fit photos I saw this morning uh, were very much part of his repertoire. So, uh, as I said, you probably already have this in your bag of tricks, but I'm just trying to get you to think about these in a new way, and maybe this can help you look at scenes 
uh, and find new ways of including this kind of repetition and contrast and continuity within your own work. So your assignment this month is to play around with these concepts of unity and variety and see what you can come up with. And if you're in the Flickr group, I'll be really excited to see your examples, as I was excited to see Darren's work. It's really fun to see your work and hear your insight in the group, and that's exactly what the purpose of the group is for, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys are taking part. If you're not in the group, uh, feel free to tag me on social media, or maybe you just send me an email sometime and just show me what you've come up with. I'd love to see how these lessons are resonating with you uh, throughout the months. On a personal level, I enjoyed putting out this lesson uh, because it gets back to kind of the fundamental bread and butter of cerebral photography techniques. In the last couple lessons, I talked a little bit more about the mindset of shooting. And so uh, I like to mix things up. And so I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. And I want to thank you for sticking with me uh, through 14 lessons so far. And I'm really excited to have the continued support from you guys. And so I hope that you're finding this to be overall a worthwhile investment in your photography. So again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, have fun with your camera this month. Best of luck with your photography, and I'll see you next time.